Welcome to my Blackboard discussion on the Federal Reserve's Open Market Operations Policy number two. Here's the Federal Reserve right over here. Now the Federal Reserve, like we said last time, has a bunch of dollars and a bunch of bonds sitting inside it. What happens? Well, the Federal Reserve's goal, we'll put this down over here, is to change the money supply. That's what this line is. Here's the quantity of the money. And when it changes the money supply, it can then change this interest rate either upwards or downwards like this. So this is what we're looking at. How does it do that? Well, let's think of these banks over here. Let's say Bank A, Bank B, and Bank C. Now these banks over here also have dollars and bonds associated with their banks. So we can put some dollars and some bonds over here like this. What does the Federal Reserve do? It interacts with these banks in some way. It's going to say to these banks, okay, let's see, what I'd like to do is lower interest rates. So let's assume that that's what the Federal Reserve's goal is. In order to do that, what the Federal Reserve should do is increase the money supply. Because as you see here, if they increase the money supply, the interest rate goes down. How are they going to do that? Well, Let's look at this world over here. How would you get more dollars into these banks' assets? Well, what you could do is actually say, look, bank, you've got some bonds in your account there. Why don't I give you some dollars? So you send the dollars over here, and you give me bonds, and the bonds come flying over here. Now, what happens to the bank? The bank has these dollars, and so the bank has money to lend. So it makes some loans, which increases the money supply some more. And by increasing the money supply some more, it actually gets a multiplier effect. Now, the Federal Reserve could actually take these dollars, send them over here as well, and buy these bonds. And each one of these instances increases the reserves in these banks so that they can make more loans, increase the money supply, and you get this kind of effect. The money supply increases and the interest rate goes down like that. Just what the Federal Reserve's policy is. So what have they done? They've changed the money supply, which changes the interest rate, which changes investment and consumption, which shifts the aggregate demand curve, in this case, to the right. Why? Because the money supply increased, interest rate went down, which means investment and consumption goes up, and the aggregate demand curve shifts to the right. Let's do this all over again, only this time we're going to start with the Federal Reserve's dollars here and the Federal Reserve's bonds over here and we're going to have these banks over here. We're going to have Bank A, B, and C. Only this time the Federal Reserve's policy is going to try to increase the interest rate. So when they try to do that, what would they do with this money supply? You got it. They try to decrease the money supply because if they decrease the money supply, the interest rate goes up like this. And by sending the interest rate up, that's what they want to do. So how are they going to do this? Well, again, banks have dollars in them, and they have bonds. These banks have dollars and bonds. Now, what would the Fed try to do in this case? Well, the Fed's going to try to take these dollars away. Well, how do they do that? They actually sell bonds to the banks. The banks give the Fed their money. And what's happened? The money supply has decreased. These banks have more bonds. They're going to send the money this way. The Federal Reserve is going to send bonds this way. Now, the banks have more bonds, but they have less money. And when the money supply decreases, the interest rate goes up. So what did the Federal Reserve do? It changed the money supply by selling bonds, which changes the interest rate which is going to change investment and consumption, which is going to change the aggregate demand curve. How does this work? It decreased the money supply, increased the interest rate, decreased investment and consumption, so the aggregate demand curve shifts to the left. In this instance, what's happening? They're trying to stop inflation. How is that so? Well, think about it. Down here, we'll draw, I think I can get it in here, the aggregate supply line. Here's the aggregate demand line. If the aggregate demand line is coming up and we're experiencing inflation like mad, they can kind of push the aggregate demand to the left by decreasing the money supply, increasing the interest rate, etc., etc. So this is their policy, contractionary policy. 
when they want to stop inflation. But what happens here in this case? In this case, what are they doing? In this case, they're increasing the money supply. So in this case, when they're trying to increase the money supply, we can assume what they're trying to do is stop a recession like this. When we're less than full employment down here, they're trying to increase the aggregate demand curve to the right. So they're trying to increase investment, increase consumption. So they increase the money supply, decrease the interest rates, and these effects happen. This is expansionary policy. There you go. It's as fast as I could do it. That's the Federal Reserve's uh, interaction with banks, changing the money supply, changing interest rates. That's the open market operations goal. Um, okay, that'll wrap it up. Look at the lecture online as well and do the homework, etc. And it all should be pretty clear. See you later. Thanks for coming.